Call of Duty was first released in 2003 as a campaign shooter, but quickly in a matter of a few years, grew to become a wildly popular multiplayer game. And all the while, the competitive Call of Duty scene began to form and develop. As esports and COD multiplayer began to grow, a company called Major League Gaming, founded by Sundance D. Giovanni and Mike Sespo, with the help of Adam Apicello, would begin to work with Call of Duty. They bought the website GameBattles.com in 2006, where teams could find and schedule competitive matches. This would eventually be the foundation for Call of Duty as an esport, and for the years to come, MLG would host the majority of Call of Duty events, with a few others hosted by a variety of companies like UMG, Gfinity, ESL, and even ESWC. The first COD to spur the competitive scene to the spotlight was Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. At release, COD 4 marked the emergence of competitive competitive COD as tournaments began to pop up all around the country. COD 4 introduced many new ways to play the game and Search and Destroy was incredibly popular in the scene. And in the biggest tournament of the year, many notable players got their chance at glory, the MLG Championship in 2009. Nate Jock's first appearance with Team Genesis finishing fourth, while a team named Extravagant took first with a legendary trio of Rambo, Big Timer, and Sharp. There were many other notable players in this tourney including Hastro, who's the current owner of Envy, Proofy, Silly, Nameless, and Stainville to name a few. Extravagant icons here, Call of Duty 4 National Champions. Similarly, Crim6 got his start in COD 4, finishing third at the second PCL tourney, and the team was awarded a whopping $500 prize. A few months passed, and Call of Duty World of War launched in the fall of 2008. Unfortunately, this game didn't cater well to the competitive scene, and many pros stayed on COD 4. Although, a few players actually did get their start in this game, including Merc. Competitive COD and Call of Duty as a whole hit its stride when Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was released in 2009. It was by far the most popular Call of Duty to date, and Competitive COD began to take off. Optic Gaming, ran by Hector Hex Rodriguez, would enter the competitive scene. Optic, who before this was a competitive sniping and content clan, would pick up a young, shrimpy McDonald's worker named Nate Shot, who would first compete in October of 2010. The most important event of the year, the Modern Warfare 2 Online MLG Championship, was filled with future stars. Going into the event, Aix and TP teamed for the first time, and this would turn out to be a historic pairing. The team Aix had left was led by a passionate, shaggy-haired kid named Clayster. In this tourney, Envy took home the title with a roster including Stainville and Sharp. Similarly, Extravagant finished second with the impressive squad of J-Cap, Rambo, Big Timer, and Sid Rock, while Clayster's squad finished fourth. Less than two weeks later was the MLG National Championship in Dallas, where Nateshot and Merc teamed for the first time, while TB and Aches were upset in the finals by a team of relatively unknown players. As Modern Warfare 2 came to a close, Black Ops 1 opened the door for many aspiring pros, and many European players got their start during this time as well, including Tommy, Mad Cat, Josh, and even Momo and Gotaga, to name a few. Domination was back as a competitive game mode, and everyone got used to seeing the FAMAS on firing range. The first online event of the year, the MLG $25,000 series, saw the first appearance of the red-headed soon-to-be superstar, Skump, as he joined the acclaimed duo of Aix and TP, who continued their dominance. They got their first win against Optic Gaming as they took home the $10,000 grand prize, and this also marked the first appearance of the loud, passionate, and soon-to-be-not-so-skinny teen from Long Island, Doug Sensor Martin. Soon after was the 2011 GameStop Championship. This was the first time that Big Timer and Merc would play together as Envy and Optic rosters merged with a roster of Big T, Merc, Hashro, and Stainville to win the $13,000 grand prize. This dynamic duo of Merc and Big T would continue to play together until July of 2013. Just two months later though was MLG Dallas 2011, the first LAN of both Scumpy and Center's career. Throughout the tournament, Quantic Leverage took home the trophy as the dynamic duo of Aix and TP was turning into a dynamic trio with Scump. In July, nearing the end of the Black Ops 1 season, Quantic Leverage would go on to pick up Proofy and win MLG Anaheim, edging out both Fear, who had the young phenoms John, Fizzerp, Twiz, and Assassin, and Optic Gaming, who now had dropped an aid shot with a roster of Merc, Big Timer, J-Cap, and Rambo. As Modern Warfare 3 released, Activision wanted to showcase the game with a massive tournament, so they put on the first ever Call of Duty XP in September of 2011 before the game actually released. The tournament, the biggest prize in COD history, boasted a $400,000 grand prize for the first place team. Things fell in place for Nade Shot as he was able to find his way onto the Optic roster as Rambo wasn't able to play because of Canadian rules. The squad came up clutch and took home the massive check, which absolutely kickstarted Nade Shot's reign as the face of competitive Call of Duty. And there you have it, Optic Gaming! As your Call of Duty XP 2011 champions, they're taking home $400,000. You just made 100 grand. How does that feel? I don't want to work at McDonald's anymore. <laughs> another player who got his first taste of success was a smack-talking phenom, Killa, who finished third with Icons at the event and would become one of the most popular pros throughout Black Ops 2. Since COD XP was held before Modern Warfare's release, the Black Ops 1 season wasn't finished until November of 2011 with the MLG National Championship, as next threat would shock the world and Doug Sensor Martin would get his first win of his career. Although it would be three years until he'd win another major, it was still a massive moment for Sensor's career. Yes! I love you! I love you! I love you, Virus! I love you! 
Modern Warfare 3 was a difficult year for competitive COD as there was no LAN feature built into the game, and because of this, MLG didn't host any tournaments. There were lower prize pools and less exposure overall for the scene. But nonetheless, the core of Big Timer, Merc, Rambo, and Skump won 6 of the 8 events they played in and got 2nd in the 2 that they didn't win. But Optic absolutely dominated the scene heading into the craziest year of competitive COD yet, and because Modern Warfare 3 season was so scattered, many players appeared for the first time, including Jur, the Irish star, in April of 2012. Black Ops 2 was a game changer for competitive Call of Duty. BO2 changed the landscape of competitive COD forever as it introduced hardpoint and score streaks into the competitive scene. What would prove to be the biggest roster change heading into Black Ops 2 was TP, Aches, and Crimsix headed to Complexity to team together. This would begin a dominant run never before seen in competitive COD, and in Black Ops 2, MLG was back in business with the LAN feature returning. But the first LAN tournament of the year was held by UMG. UMG Chicago, held in Optic's backyard, would prove to be monstrous for the green wall and go down in infamy. The tourney came down to Optic versus Complexity in the finals, and Optic pulled it off in a game five of a reset bracket and an extremely close grand final. After the match, Nade Shot stood up and taunted Complexity as it led to Aix pushing Nade and starting a scuffle. This push would go down in COD history, truly marking the start of the Optic versus Aix rivalry that would plague the green wall for years to come. From Optic, up top. You see Optic Gaming amped up, Nade Shot, Merc. Big, Big players, Aix, Gump, all your champions. Oh, a little bit of hostility here between Nate Shot and Aix. Aix getting really angry. Nonetheless, Complexity would go on to dominate the game, winning six more major tournaments, but there was one, the one that mattered the most, that just slipped out of their grasp. COD Champs in April of 2013 came down to Complexity, Optic Gaming, Envy, and Farico Impact as the top four. But Farico Impact got the best of Optic twice, once in winners and once in losers, and they would go on to punch their ticket to the grand finals to face Envy. Farico Impact's roster, consisting of Karma, Parasite, Killa, and Miracles, was playing incredibly well. The series got reset and it came down to a historic round of SD on Meltdown. Killa clutched a 2v1 in round 10 to give Farico Impact a Black Ops 2 championship, one that would never be forgotten. It's a 1v1, Proofy versus Killa. The bomb is down for Farico, shots fired. Killa trying to desperately take out Proofy. Proofy has away. to go out and defuse it. Killa gonna draw him out. Shoot Killa, Killa. so oh, close so to a weak. championship. It's all hanging on this one kill, 12 seconds left on the clock. He's done Proofy it. has to go back. Killa's gonna have to chase Proofy. Proofy has to go for the defuse here. He's done it. He's gonna get it. Killa's gonna get it. He does it. We have a real champion. the championship. Even though the rest of Black Ops 2 was dominated by complexity, Optic was making the headlines as Nadeshot and Skump became increasingly popular on YouTube. Both of their channels exploded during the year and were garnering hundreds of thousands of viewers. Through this time, Merc and Big Timer's historic duo finally came to an end, as Merc headed to Envy to team with Karma, Rambo, and Proofy, and was replaced by Jcap and Optic for the rest of the season. And that's why we parted ways with Merc, so that we could show you guys that we want to win. Like, we're here. It's gonna happen. Both Karma with Envy and Farico Impact without him would struggle to get back to the top. While Complexity continued to dominate, Skump would go on to create some legendary moments, including his I'm the best in the game moment on Yemen Hardpoint in the Spring Championship in Anaheim. <laughs> While Black Ops 2 came to a close, Infinity Ward was excited to put out their new series for COD, Call of Duty Ghosts. Ghosts brought back domination as a competitive game mode, replacing Hardpoint, but nothing could stop Complexity's dominance. Aix, TP, and Crim6 dropped Clayster after the first event of the year, an event that they actually won, and picked up the already COD champion Karma. This squad would go on to absolutely dominate Call of Duty Ghosts, winning six tournaments as a full squad, including a dominant COD champs performance, and near the end of the year, the trio even won without Karma. A flurry of other players made their professional debuts throughout the season, including many Halo players, like the likes of Formal, who teamed with another former Halo player, Enable. Aside from Complexity, later to be bought by Evil Geniuses in May of 2014, Optic Gaming's roster saw many changes. UMG Philadelphia in January of 2014 marked the storied end of Big Timer's career, as he hung up the controller and was replaced by Clayster following the difficult tournament. But I have decided that UMG Philadelphia is going to be the last tournament in my um, competing career. It was so difficult for Optic, in fact, that Skump briefly left the team without telling anyone to join Envy after massive disagreements with Nadeshot and the squad. This was breaking news, shattering the league, and greatly shifting the balance of rosters. But two weeks later, Skumpy would actually rejoin Optic, and the roster would consist of Nadeshot, Skump, Clayster, and Embos, who would eventually be replaced by Proofy in March. This led into the X Games, which was an extremely exciting event for competitive COD. There was no prize pool, but the top three teams would receive X Games medals for placing, which created one of the wildest clutches in COD history, as Proofy clutched a 1v4 versus Aix and the Evil Geniuses Dynasty. Now that trophy system goes down, and Proofy actually gonna get the kill 
Can he find the second as well though? He is going to be the door. Wow. Proofy gets two. There's one more there as well. Proofy needs to be careful because he was very weak. The Warboy's going to come in. Proofy stops shooting. He's going to look for the third. Proofy's so close. There's another three. The Proofy. Proofy just went huge. Oh my god. Proofy. Oh lord, fuck it. Which led to an Optic Gaming X Games gold medal. One of the best moments in Optic Gaming's storied history. As Call of Duty Ghost came to a close, so did the end of the Complexity Evil Geniuses Dynasty and the legendary duo. As Aix would join FaZe with a roster of Sensor, Apathy, and Slasher, while TP and Karma would join Optic Nation together, and Crim6 would join Optic Gaming for the start of Advanced Warfare. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare brought a truly advanced movement system and new game mode called Uplink to COD that would completely change how competitive Call of Duty was played. And some players successfully embraced this change, while others weren't able to. Two players that quickly embraced the change were Scump and Formal. Formal, who got off to a strong start in Ghost after coming from the competitive Halo scene, joined the already dynamic Optic roster a few weeks into Advanced Warfare replacing Dito. The Green Wall quickly became an elite force in the scene, dominating the 2K tournaments early on in the year. But after getting second at the MLG Columbus Open to Optic's true rival Aix, who is now playing on phase, they won UMG Orlando in March and headed into COD Champs as the clear favorite. But to their demise, they blew their opportunity against Denial, a new org in the scene who proved to have a stacked roster of two former Optic members, Clayster and Jcap, paired with a veteran Crowder and an emerging star attached as this talented roster would go on to win the Call of Duty Championship. As for Clayster on Denial, this win was his first ring of his career, and later in the year would win the Season 3 playoffs that would mark the start of a 1,400-day drought of major championship wins for him personally. Out of all the champs' performances, Nate Shots was infamous. Not only did Optic fail to live up to expectations, but he pulled out the HBR, a gun that barely anyone was using at the time. After the tournament, Nate Shot, who was still the face of competitive Call of Duty, announced his retirement from the scene and would later leave Optic as he announced his new clothing brand, 100 Thieves, which would eventually evolve into one of the biggest esports orgs in the world. As for Optic's roster, he was replaced by Karma, which officially began the era of the next Call of Duty dynasty. After Karma's arrival, Optic would go on to win four tournaments in a row, and in all, win six of the last nine, finishing second in the three that they didn't win. They kept off their dominant year with a win at MLG World Finals in October of 2015, taking home the $100,000 grand prize. Throughout the AW season, many up-and-coming talents rose or appeared for the first time, including Hook, Temp, Octane, Zuma, TJ Halley, Kenny, Envoy, and many, many others. But regardless, this newly formed Optic Dynasty wouldn't be slowed down heading into a brand new game, Black Ops 3. There were many changes heading into this year. On January 1st of 2016, Activision bought MLG. This revolutionized the competitive scene and brought a lot of stability to the system. It allowed for MLG to host the official pro league for Call of Duty and create a season schedule for the year. Unfortunately, this new system put an age restriction in place as players had to be 18 to compete for prizes, which forced many young stars to sit out and wait for their chance to play. Similarly, the game mode Uplink remained in the rotation, but CTF was added back in as well. And specialists, which are specific abilities related to each character in a game, were introduced and would be part of the competitive scene for three of the next four years. Optic dominated throughout the Black Ops 3 season. Scump and Formal were seemingly unstoppable as the Green Wall were heavily favored heading into COD Champs in September of 2016. Everyone thought that this would be the year that Scump and Optic would get their ring, but there would be one team that would stand in their way. Cloud9. Who? Yep, you heard that right. Cloud9 was captained by none other than Aix, the nemesis of Optic Gaming. He and Cloud9, a roster of Assault, Lacefield, and Ricky, eliminated Optic from the tournament in a devastating round 11 on Strong. The second player coming in challenge over top. Formal's gonna be able to help him out. Karma going over oh. the kill. Formal up to you. 1v1 situation. Assault coming over. Oh. And Assault oh. Cloud9. 1v1. Optic Gaming. We will see you fudging later. C9 able to clutch up in the end. And what a performance that was. All the way Ladies down to the gentlemen. AR battle, and Meet that is going to be it. Congratulations, C9. Aix, two cut champs, back to back, takes down the green wall. By the end of the tournament, Envy would take home an impressive COD Champs title with the fantastic roster of Jcap, Apathy, Slack, and John after beating the elite European roster of Splice with Bance, Josh, Joe, and Raided in the grand finals. As Aix was making waves in COD Champs, his duo of the past, TP, announced his retirement from COD and would go on to join Optic as their coach during World War II and Black Ops 4. Two months after Black Ops 3 COD Champs, the most controversial game in COD's history, 
Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was released. Many players hated the game, and the scene saw a decline in attention. But the fast-paced advanced movement was still in play from the previous title, and that played favorite to many players. Throughout the year, Optic continued their success after a slow start. Another squad that found their groove was FaZe Clan. But in May, the trade of the year was completed, as Clayster, who was on FaZe, was traded to E United for an up-and-coming superstar, Gunless. E United was a new org in the scene, but their roster shocked the community, having extreme success early in the year, winning CWL Atlanta with a squad of Silly, Gunless, and the Twins, our cities and Pristini. The E United squad, now with Clayster, became one of the fan favorites for years to come. The final two events of the year, the Pro League Stage 2 Playoffs and the Call of Duty Championship, were incredible. In the playoffs, Optic was knocked down to loser's bracket by the reigning COD champions, Envy, but got a rematch against them in the Grand Finals, where Optic miraculously reset the bracket and took home the playoff title. Now, heading into COD Champs, Optic were the clear and heavy favorites, but in the second round, were shocked and sent to the loser's bracket by Clayster and E United. Optic fought their way through losers, and beat EU in a close one to then face Envy again in the Grand Finals in back-to-back -back events. Once again, Optic pulled off the impossible as they were able to reset the bracket and beat Envy to finally get Skump, Formal, and the Green Wall their long-awaited championship. The curse has been broken! The dynasty has been cemented! They are the greatest roster in Call of Duty history! Optic Gaming! This put Crim6 in the prestigious two-time champion club and made Karma the only three-time champion. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end as Call of Duty World War II was released and the newly cemented Optic Dynasty began to crack. COD World War II is a drastic change in playstyle to previous titles. It was extremely slow and tactical as Uplink was removed from the rotation and CTF remained, while smoke grenades were implemented without any thermal vision or trophy system to counter it like in past CODs. It took many teams a while to figure out how to play on a slower paced game and a more tactical search and destroy. But Team Caliber, led by the young gods Kenny and Accuracy, with Chino in theory, took the league by storm, winning the first two events of the year. But by March, the rest of the league began to catch up as having elite SMG players was seemingly crucial for a team's success. Optic Gaming, the famed dynasty, was struggling to live up to expectations. They didn't make a finals appearance until the Pro League Stage 1 playoffs in April of 2018, where they faced off against FaZe Clan with the established and naturally talented roster of Attach, Zuma, Priesta, and Crowder. Optic had seemingly finally found their championship form until it all came crumbling down in a round 11 of S&D on London Docks. Attach made an impossible 1v3 clutch, and Optic would never be the same. It's all in Attach now. The comeback seems to be dead. The comeback seems to be dead. He runs through his own artillery. He runs through his own artillery. And now it's a one versus one. Yeah, but Krim knows where he's going. Oh my god, Krim's hitting mid-map. Attach comes back. Here's the gunfight. Attach is able to win it. FaZe Clan up 2-0 with the 1-5 comeback. Are you kidding me? The fall of Optic Gaming was the talk of the season. After an embarrassing top 16 place finish at CWL Seattle, the roster, who had won so many tournaments and a COD championship together, finally broke apart. Scump and Krim demanded to drop Formal, who joined Luminosity, and Karma, who temporarily retired. These legends were replaced by the young and talented Methods and Octane, but unfortunately for Optic, they could never rebound and finish outside the top 16 at COD Champs. For the rest of the league, there were so many exciting new players and teams to follow in World War II, like Hook making his return to competitive COD, TK with Kenny and Accuracy, Rise Nation with Gunless, TJ Halley, Looney, and Slasher, and individual talents like Dashy and Scraps breaking out, while many European teams like Red Reserve began to push American teams to the brink. August of 2017 presented COD Champs, one of the most shocking events of all time, as the favorite, Rise Nation, finished outside the top 12, and Optic Gaming failed to qualify for tournament play. While Evil Geniuses, captained by the legendary Aches, with a roster of Apathy, Assault, and Silly, beat the young TK in the Grand Finals to take home the championship. After the tournament, a story that would evolve over the years was that of Optic's ownership. In November of 2017, Hex sold the majority share of Optic to Infinite Esports. This would develop and create a rift between Hex and Infinite ownership that would eventually be the cause of Hex's departure from the org in 2019. As for champs, this win was especially important for Aches and Apathy as they joined the prestigious club of two-time champions. There were many changes ahead going into Black Ops 4 as the rumor of COD going from 4v4 to 5v5 were looming large. 
Throughout the past years, Nadeshot, after leaving Optic, had been working on his new brand, 100 Thieves, and just a short time before Black Ops 4 was released, it was confirmed that Competitive COD was heading into 5v5 format, and at the same time, 100 Thieves announced that they were joining the competitive Call of Duty scene. These combined caused a massive disruption in rosters, kickstarting the wildest roster mania to date, as all teams were scrambling to pick up a fifth player. The league was abuzz with Nadeshot returning as an owner to lead his squad against his former org and Optic Hex as the competitive scene definitely needed a new rivalry. Optic Gaming kicked off the year flaming hot with a win at CWL Vegas in December of 2018 as Dashi quickly reached stardom as undoubtedly the best player at the event and winning the MVP. But they struggled to capture that lightning in a bottle once again as they didn't win another final for the rest of the year, coming in third at London, Anaheim, and COD Champs. United now with a roster of RCDs, Pristini, Clayster, JCap, and another young phenom, Abizi, needed to make a change. They dropped JCap and brought in a highly anticipated rookie, Simp, an SD star well known in the wagers and SD communities, who many thought had the chance to be the next great player in the scene. As the rest of the year progressed, he more than lived up to the hype. As competition continued, Simp dominated matches and put up stellar stat lines while United continued to improve. They are so trapped in, and there's the flick, and there's the house on What is that shot? Are you kidding me, Sim? Well, you know he's challenging. You know he's challenging. The young god! Although 100 Thieves began to hit their stride, winning CWL London and CWL Anaheim, acquiring preset from FaZe had changed their year, and they were now the most dominant team in the CWL. The franchise league was a guarantee, and information began to leak out about its city-based format with potential orgs that might be involved. Into the second half of the year, United had something to prove. Clayster was nearing 1,400 days without a tournament win, and he felt cursed. But finally, at CWL playoffs in Miami, that curse would be broken. Led by the young superstar Simp, United would beat Gen.G, a young and dangerous team who finished second three times on the year, to win the playoffs and the $500,000 grand prize. In August of 2019, United took to COD Champs in Los Angeles with something to prove. In a packed poly pavilion, Simp, City Zabizi, Pristini, and their captain, Clayster, played an incredible tournament, beating the hot Optic Gaming in the winner's finals, and finally beating 100 Thieves in the grand finals to be labeled champion. It's on Slasher! The United do it! They go back to back! as Placer also joined the prestigious two times champions club. Black Ops 4 as a whole inherently created many breakout players like Dylan Cod, Envoy, Simp, Abizi, Dashi, Brack, Celium, and many more. After COD Champs, Call of Duty Modern Warfare was nearing its long-awaited release, and Call of Duty franchising was finally announced. With this, many orgs were finalizing their situations in the league, and one of those being NRG Esports, who secured a spot in Chicago and announced in September that they were bringing in former Optic owner, Hex, as a co-owner of their organization. The franchising and its rules led to the largest and most chaotic roster mania in COD history as the new Call of Duty franchises were looking to build out their rosters with a mix of young stars, experienced veterans, and international flair. Finally, by the release of Modern Warfare in October, teams' rosters were known and the Call of Duty community was awaiting the start of this new era of competitive COD in January of 2020.